Okay, we are going to uh, continue here with the the third round on this little project that we're going to um, eventually uh, apply to our painting. It'll hopefully be the next video. Let's see. Let me clean off that little bit that was sitting there. I, I will say I do keep around all these. Um, not all. <laughs> I often keep around. Yeah, these used up, seemingly used up paper towels. Oftentimes they feel like when they are really dry, they're good at scrubbing out the color, um, any remaining sort of staining color. Anyways, we've been adding some uh, yellow and going to a little bit of yellow green. Um, so for this third and, and final pass, I'm just going to keep sort of getting stronger and more concentrated color, creamier, as I um, have been calling it now. Um, that's the Azo yellow, and this is the peacock blue. mixing in some over here. Um, so right now I know that there's a lot of blue in that brush. Um, heck, what if I did that? That way I could save a little bit. Or I might just sort of rinse it out anyways and get back to my um, to starting off with the yellow for this uh, third graded wash. Um, let me go ahead and get started. I, I, I will say I sort of mix up some and then usually try to uh, mix up a little more just so I don't find myself in that situation where I'm running out of mixed paint, mixed color. So I want to um, Keep adding stronger concentration of color, just like we've been sort of doing with our flat washes. And then, I'm gonna get rid of that just pure yellow that was in there and quickly mix up a little bit of this green that's pretty watery. I'm gonna, I just got a little bit of water out of my brush. And I'm going to bring this and tap in this green over here. And at this point, I'm going to move things around a bit. Remember when um, down here when I sort of introduced some water because I wanted to lighten things up towards the upper left? I'm going to do a similar thing right now, but um, partly it's going to be color and partly it's just going to be because I can tell it's not moving around as much as I want it to. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of yellow back up there. And as you can see now, the yellow is probably a little bit too strong. That's okay. I'm going to keep kind of mixing that down here. So it's really like I uh, say, a little bit of this sort of back and forth and back and forth. I mean, depending on the color you're trying to get to, or the darkness you're trying to get to, or the intensity. Um, this is this is pretty straight um, peacock blue that I'm going to dab in a little bit.
think I'm gonna um well what am I gonna do? Maybe I'll you try a little bit more. At this point when I'm adding just a little bit more color, I want to make sure that this brush is not introducing a bunch of water as well. Because I can tell the shape is drying pretty consistently throughout. I sort of do this back and forth and moving it around and then eventually say, okay, that's enough of that. And I'll sort of uh, let it dry mostly in, in the direction that I, I want to make sure that my gradation is moving this from one from a yellow to a green. So let me uh, move on to the next row, which is going to be our Azo yellow and quinacridone burnt orange. Normally, I would let that shape dry before I started painting another layer, but um, I'm just gonna just gonna go for it here. So let's see. I got some yellow going. I'm gonna get some quinacridone burnt orange. So this might be a good time to to also just sort of remind you that, um, you know, I, I am trying to make a pretty creamy mix of each of these. And if your brush is really watery at first and it picks up just a little bit, that'll be a, a really watery wash. And so I keep sort of going back here and collecting some more just pigment to, to mix in that I'm going to be mixing in and that's much more concentrated. Let me rinse that out because I'm going to start with the yellow again. The yellow is um, yeah yeah sort of a uh, juicy started um, mixing a little bit too early there. After you get more comfortable with this, like I think I talked about in class, you'll 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 start to be able to um, transition the color as you're going down as opposed to needing to do sort of an entire flat wash first, but until you're comfortable with really establishing the um, how the, the water is distributed evenly across the shape and trying to get the color to move along with it. Too much too much water here right now. Soak it up. Where was I? I? I would suggest just trying to um, ease into it more by laying down a, a flat wash first. And this, hopefully you can t tell this sort of at the beginning we were laying down a flat wash of, of water. So that is the kind of effect we're going to be going for for the avocado pit. We'll um, keep adding some layers that will be a little bit darker. Not going to get too crazy, but um, that's the idea for for those colors. As I'm looking at it, you know, the, this it's definitely these colors. Um, 
I don't. It, the pit doesn't have nearly as much yellow, but it, it will definitely um, starts out with a mix like that, and then I'll be um, adding. We'll get to that in the painting. Let's see. This third one is um, a fun one. I um, I I'm at the end of this tube, so um, I'm gonna try to just uh, instead of I've been squeezing as sort of as much as I can, but instead of uh, tossing it, I'm gonna try to just mix up some colors here. Nice. So that's pretty strong. And I'm going to, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to mix in a little bit, mix up a little bit of quinacridone rose as well. Just a little bit of um, color sticking around here that maybe I don't want. Hey, you guys. Partly this is, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to not be so worried about this particular shape because I am doing, you know, a little bit more, trying to make things a little bit more random. mixing in a little bit now already, which I know I sort of go back and forth and <laughs> whether I want you guys to do that or not. Play with both. Whew, look at that. You um, you will learn that some of these, some of the paints really like shooting are very, what's called active. You know, when they're wet and wet and they will sort of disperse across a wet area really quickly some will take their time um, and that also depends a lot just on how wet the particular shape happens to be the paper happens to be Let's see what happens if I just sort of keep I don't know if you remember, I was kind of having fun um, just seeing how that this guy dried with a little bit of unevenness and just playing with a little bit more random, being okay with random stuff. And it did, it did do pretty nice. Um, it's interesting, as I'm looking at this, I can tell like there's not a lot of difference between these two guys. Um, the whole point that um, it's easier to build up and add and get to more intense color with this layering approach than than scrubbing back. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry.